Now, if you recognize this device behind me, you'll know it's the Two Trees TTC 450 CNC. And as you can see, it's still in my shop, which is a testimony to the fact that I really liked it. Now, I'm not gonna talk about the TTC 450 in this video. I'm gonna talk about this, so stick around. Hey, how's it going everybody? Steve here, welcome back. Now, I reviewed this TTC 450 a month ago, maybe a little more and really liked it and if you haven't seen the review of this click up in the corner here and go watch that video but then come back here because what i want to talk about is this new spindle that that two trees was kind enough to send me to have a look at and this is a 500 watt spindle that replaces that original 80 watt motor now that motor i was surprised actually how good it worked it it made this spindle much better than than the low end 3018s and and really cheap 4040s so very good motor but it was only 80 watts and realistically that's underpowered it doesn't mean it won't work what it means is you end up having to go much slower than you would hope and jobs take a lot longer so this 500 watt spindle uh, basically turns this into a true you know entry level professional cnc and uh, at 500 watts you can plow through material and i'll show you some of the work i did here where i'm i'm diving in five millimeters deep into into a piece of walnut and i had the tool path and the and the the speeds are, are really actually pretty aggressive i tried to make it that way to see if i could you know render the the spindle uh, into some kind of failure and i couldn't so that's enough context we can we can get going here and i'll start with a quick fly around just to show you what this spindle actually includes and how to get it plugged in all right so the first thing you're going to notice here is that the power supply the internal one for the motor has been replaced by this big box and there is a potentiometer on the front to control minimum to maximum i just leave it set to max so now moving over to the the spindle itself you can see it's much bigger big cooling fan on top a completely different motor mount and uh, you might notice that big uh, quarter inch bit that i have in there and that's because I went to Amazon and I ordered an ER11 quarter inch collet. Uh, it's very nice that they use standard collets here so you can replace things. The default uh, motor comes with only metric collets, so a three millimeter and a six millimeter. And if you're like me and you have another CNC uh, or you wanna use router bits, uh, you really can't with, with those metric collets, so I ordered a couple more, and I'll put an affiliate link down in the description below if you're interested in picking those up. Now, stepping up from the motor, you can see the cabling here. That yellow connector is the one that goes to the power supply, and then you hook the existing motor wires into the uh, second set of wires. Note the color there on the cables because uh, their install video, the wires are a different color. Uh, I'm not sure what would happen if you hook them up backwards, but it probably can't be good. So uh, pay attention to, to the colors that I showed here. And finally, let's switch around to the back and you can see where that wire goes. Uh, I ran mine through the existing drag chain. You can pop up those little tabs and run the wire in there. Uh, it just makes it nice, uh, much neater. Uh, I think in, the, in their install video, they recommend that you just zip tie those things to the existing drag chain. Uh, and I've seen other videos where they do that. It just doesn't look very nice. So I ran mine through the chain. And with everything installed, I set to work doing some samples and I replicated the test I did with the 80 watt and really just my name. I engraved a font. I'm using the three millimeter uh, V bit that they include and you can see it works quite well, but I wanted to try something a little harder. So I took my company logo and engraved it on a piece of, uh, I believe it's red birch. And it came out quite well. Sorry about the focus there. The, my smart camera was focused on the motor mount. Uh, I'll show you the final result here though. Uh, now you can see the pie slice is actually pretty aggressively engraved. Uh, that's a function of the, the guy who laid it down as opposed to the tool. Uh, my uh, tool path there, the, the depth just wasn't set correctly. Uh, but the rest of it came out uh, better than I would have expected. All right, I did one final attempt here at an at a engraving. In this case, it's a deep engraving based on a height map image. It's actually a person's head. Uh, I believe the guy's name is Sean. Uh, don't ask me who Sean is. He's some guy I found on, on Google Images. 
and just engraved them. Now I'm using a, a quarter inch ball nose bit here. The plunge here is about five millimeters at the deepest point and it did this in a single pass. So be really impressed by, by uh, how well this actually came out considering that I, I have the same aggressive toolpath feeds and speeds that I would have for my Onefinity and I'm now using them on a, a CNC that cost a fraction of the price. So kudos to Two Trees for adding this 500 watt motor as, a, as an upgrade, uh, because I don't think you could actually do this with the 80 watt spindle. I think the motor would stall, stall out if you're diving in that deep. So there you go. And uh, I can't say enough good things about this 500 watt spindle. So this is definitely an excellent way to upgrade what is already a fantastic CNC uh, into uh, you know, a 500 watt monster, which you can seriously use as an entry level production CNC router. So if you have a side hustle or you're, you know, you've got a small business going where you wanna do a bit of CNC work, this might be a good option for that uh, before you make that, that lunge into the, the larger CNCs that will cost you several thousand dollars. I would also recommend if you have one of these to buy that, those ER11 collets. I'll put a link in the description down below, an affiliate link, so you can help out the channel at the same time. But what it will give you is a quarter inch and an eighth inch collet. Uh, so if you do have existing bits or you want to use router bits, uh, it will accept those. And uh, this will allow you to do, uh, you know, really aggressive CNC engraving, like a height map. Now I did a mapping video where I actually showed you how to create a, a one of these height maps based on a real map. Uh, and I'll put a link to, the, to it up here. Uh, go watch that and I'll see you over there. And with that, we can wind down. So get out there, make your world, and I'll see you next time.